Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video we're going to use Code Engine to actually deploy an application from source code and get it up and running on the internet. So as a quick overview of what we're actually going to be doing in this video, I'm going to be switching over to my IBM Cloud account um, and I'm going to then point Code Engine at the My Health application source code. So we're going to be using My Health again, which you've obviously seen in uh, one or two other videos. Um, we're actually going to set some simple parameters uh, to describe the build and then we're going to click create and start using the app. So effectively what we're doing here is we're not actually building a container image ourselves. We're not downloading any source code to our local machines. We're not then using any Docker commands to create a container ourselves and push it to any registry. We're going to get Code Engine to do all of that stuff for me. So it's dead simple. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump over to my IBM Cloud account. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off in my GitHub repository. So this is um, github.com slash James Belton IBM slash node2si-openshift. And the node-sti-openshift um, is the name of the repository in which the code for this application actually sits. And again, for Code Engine to be able to deploy directly from source, um, the source code actually needs to be in a code repository uh, that it can actually access. So obviously, something like GitHub um, is, is a good place. So um, very quickly, we kind of need to know the structure of the application. So the actual application source itself, as it were, actually sits within this site directory. So I'll just go and have a quick look in there. Um, so, this is, um, so, so this is basically all the code um, that runs the application. Now, the important thing here is that I have this Docker file. So um, if you followed earlier videos where we've actually downloaded the source code and um, built a, a container uh, on our local machines, what you've had to do is actually create the Docker file. Um, what I've now done is actually created the Docker file and put it into, um, into the source code itself. So if you just go and have a look at this, um, it's exactly the same code within this Docker file that we've uh, that we've used before if you've if you've seen those particular videos. So again, nothing very exciting in here. It's it's fairly standard stuff. But what this is basically doing is, is telling Docker how to build uh, the container in the first place. So um, we just need to bear in mind that uh, the way that our application is structured is that all of the um, source that's needed to actually run uh, the application is within this site um, subdirectory. Okay, so let's go back over to IBM Cloud, my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com, and um, let's get back over to Code Engine. So let's uh, click the Code Engine icon over here, and uh, let's start building this uh, this application from source code. So I'm going to I'm going to jump right in, as it says over here, and uh, what I'm going to do is actually put in the the URL of my application code, my source code within GitHub, so um, HTTPS, github.com, James Belton IBM, node-s2i, OpenShift. So we just pop that in there, then click the Start Creating button. So again, this is an application, so I'm going to leave this as application over here, and um, I'm just going to give it a more meaningful name. So I'm going to call this My Health, uh, and I'm going to uh, put From Source in there as well. So My Health from Source Code, there we go. Uh, and then I'm going to create a project. So I'm going to create a new project. If I had an existing project, then obviously I could use that again. So again, I just need to choose the, lo the location. I'm going to stick with Frankfurt because um, that's my closest location. And then give my project a name. So I'm going to call this uh, My Health um, from Source. Can't spell. From Source. There we go. Uh, resource groups. I'm going to stick with Wall instead. And then some tags. So again, I'm going to put my name in there. So now I did it. A uh, demo, and um, let's put Code Engine in there. Just so I know what this is all about. Okay. So um, with that, let's then click Create. So it's going to then submit and create the project for me. So there we go. My project is now created. Um, now, I'm going to choose um, the code to run. So again, last time we used a container image. This time I actually want to build from source code. So what this will do is actually take the source code um, to actually build a container image for me. So the source code URL is as we paste it in. So uh, github.com, blah, blah, blah. 
and then I just need to specify some build details. So this bit's quite important. So um, the, the so so one thing is getting the branch name of the code. So if I just click back over here, you can see the branch name of the code is actually master. So um, I just need to um, overwrite that with master, because that's the branch of my code. And then the context directory. So this is the root folder. So this is where um, this um, site folder comes in, because that's where my source code actually sits. So I'm going to type site in there. And uh, then I'm going to click next. So um, specifying the build details and the strategy. So basically, this my strategy is Docker files. I'm building this uh, from a Docker file. So the Docker file is obviously the one I showed you in my uh, site directory. So my Docker file name is Docker file. Um, there's a timeout here. So this is a timeout on um, on the build. So if it takes longer than 10 minutes, then it's going to automatically timeout. And then I just need the build resources. So you know, what do I want my machine to look like? So one V CPU, four gig of RAM. Um, I can have a small one, a medium, a large, or an extra large. So I'm going to stick with medium and then click next. And then the output. So this is where do I actually want my uh, my new image, my container file to actually live. So I'm going to choose my registry server. So I'm going to choose my uh, London registry server. So again, you need to have a, uh, for this, you need to have a uh, an IBM Cloud registry um, service created within your account. But you can obviously um, uh, choose any one around the world. I'm choosing London. Uh, my registry access is automatic because it's, it's a public registry. Then I need to choose a namespace. So I could use the existing one, but I'm actually going to create a new namespace for this. And this will do this behind the scenes automatically for me. So I'm going to call this um, code engine, code engine namespace, just so we can see it in a moment. And then the image name or the repository. So let's call this um, my health um, code engine from source. There we go. And then give it a tag, so like a version number. So I'm going to call this 1.0.0 and then click done. So that's going to um, actually update my container repository for me. And we'll go and see that in a moment or two as well. Um, okay, so this, so just going to check the details here. So this is where the image is actually going to write. So um, just checking that that's correct. Um, it's going to be automatic. That's the source code URL, and uh, then the branch name, which is master, and then of course the context directory, so site. So my build details are okay. Um, I'm going to stick with the listening port. I'm not too worried about changing that. Uh, I'm just going to again just check my runtime settings. So again, um, this is the obviously the scaling, the auto scaling. So what's the minimum number of instances that I always want to be running? So I can set that from anything to from zero to two hundred and fifty, um, and then the maximum number of instances do I want to scale to? So again, zero to uh, two hundred and fifty. So again, think about um, how active your application is likely to be. Um, how reactive you want it to be in terms of scaling and those kinds of things. So um, instance resources. So again, I can uh, define the amount of CPU memory for each instance. So again, I can go from a, a quite a small build uh, right up to something with eight CPUs and uh, 32 gig of RAM. Um, I'm going to, um, let's, let's change this. I'm going to move this up to, let's say, uh, two CPUs and uh, four gig of RAM. And uh, and then the request. So again, you know, how quickly do I want a cool off period? Um, so it's my cool down period, and then the uh, the number of recurrent current requests. It's actually going to trigger um, a, um, a a scaling instance. Um, if I have any variables, instant variables, again, I can add them in here, but I don't have any. Okay, so um, this is all correct. I can look at pricing details. So again, it will just give me some information about pricing. Um, but um, then all I need to do is click Create. And what it's now doing is deploying the application for me. So it's going off. It's reading my, uh, my source code. It's taking that Docker file. It's building an image for me. It's going to push the image up to... Uh, my uh, my my image repository, and um, and then it's going to actually deploy it for me uh, on Code Engine, and uh, in a moment I'll get a URL and I'll actually be able to go and uh, run the My Health application. So so I'll just give that a couple of moments. It's obviously um, um, actually building the image, so it's going to take uh, um, thirty seconds or so, but it's it's now deploying. So again, you can see all the information up here. 
So I might just take a, a few moments. So we can see that uh, my revision is now ready. And there you go, you can see it's ready and it's running an instance of my application which is currently running. So if I want to go and see it running, I just click my open application URL and uh, there we go. So example health is running again and um, I can log in, uh, sign in and um, there you go, it's up and running. So basically what I've done is, is built the application from uh, from source code. So just to um, just to show you this as well. So um, what you saw is is um, as part of that, I was actually pushing uh, creating a brand new container image and pushing it up to my repository, my container repository. So let's go and have a look at my uh, my my registry, my container registry rather. So I need to go to to the Kubernetes uh, menu to to really see this. So if I click registry. Um, then you can see um, that I've got my container registry information here. So if I go and look at my namespaces, what you can see here is the namespace that I created, which was Code Engine namespace. Um, and then you can see the repository that I've created as well. So you can see that was asked updated. So again, if I click down here, you can see the repository. So I've got the My Health uh, Code Engine from Source. That's the repository I created. And then you can see the uh, the, the manifest type and the Docker's. And then uh, you can also see the images that are within my repository as well. So this image down here is the one that we deployed in the last video, um, which is the one that we created um, using a, a local machine um, through, uh, through Docker commands. This is the one that's just been created for me by, um, by Code Engine and then pushed up into my repository. So if I wanted to, I could then use this um, this actual image to deploy to um, either back into Code Engine, or I could use that image as well to um, actually deploy into a Kubernetes or even an OpenShift cluster if I wanted to. So let's just uh, pop back into Code Engine again. Um, let's go and have a look at our projects. So if I pop back into here, what you'll now see is that you can see um, that some resource um, allocations and you see what the CPU and the memory is. So if I go back into my applications and I click my application here, the other thing you'll notice here is it's now got zero instances. So there's actually zero instances running and that's because there's been no activity on the, on the, on the site for a couple of moments. So if I go back into here, let's try logging in again. So you'll notice there's a little bit of a pause whilst it signs in. And that's basically because it's it's starting up the container again uh, within Code Engine. So um, again, if you this kind of illustrates the point that if you've got lots of usage or you're expecting peaks, and sometimes it's better to have instances running uh, because otherwise it might take uh, just a few moments for your um, container to start up again. So we go it started up again. So now you can go and see that there's a there's an instance running. Right, so hopefully you've seen there just how simple it is to actually get an application up and running on Code Engine without having to build a container yourself and just running it straight from the source code from GitHub. So what just happened there was that we uh, we basically configured Code Engine uh, and a project within Code Engine so that um, Code Engine took the source code straight from a GitHub repository. Um, it then built the container image uh, for us using the provided Docker file, so the Docker file that was actually within the uh, the GitHub repository. Um, Code Engine then actually pushed um, the image that it created into my uh, container image repository within IBM Cloud. It created a new namespace for it for me, and then uh, pushed the uh, the image into uh, into that namespace. And then Code Engine basically took that image and then ran the application for me. Um, in a Kubernetes environment that again I have, uh, I don't have to manage or think about. And whilst it did all that, we saw that it did the scaling for me as well. So scaling down to zero when I wasn't actually uh, using the application. So hopefully from that again you can see just how simple Code Engine is to use and how easy it is to deploy your applications using Code Engine. Okay, and that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful and you've enjoyed it. As always, if you have, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel and then you'll be notified when new videos are added to, to this series. But in the meantime, again, thanks very much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time.